Good morning and welcome to this month's virtual lecture. Uh, as a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming days. Uh, my name is Jem Midgley and I'm pleased to introduce our speaker today, James Reid. James will be showing us some tips and tricks for working with EM data in Geoscience Analyst. He's using the latest version uh, 3.4 which is available to download from the Mirror Geoscience website now. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the Q&A. Please be aware that James may wait until the end to answer the question. James, over to you. Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, uh, welcome everyone. And what I'm going to do today is just show you important display of EF data in Geoscience Analyst Pro uh, 3.4, and also uh, demonstrate the primary field calculation and uh, the Maxwell link. And I'm going to uh, use two data sets. One is a downhole EM data set from North Queensland, Balcuma in North Queensland. Um, and the other is a, a VTAM data set also from Northwest Queensland. And they're both uh, public domain data sets. So, I've got here essentially a blank project, and I'm just going to uh, import a Amira TEM file. So this is a downhole EM example, uh, just by dragging and dropping it into the uh, into the viewer. And I'll just check that the right columns are selected for the uh, coordinates, and click OK. And I've now got a a loop and three drill holes. I'll just show that in plan. So I should say that at the moment, Analyst supports a sort of re restricted version of the Amira TEM format. So uh, this file I exported out of Maxwell and, and I'm able to import it into, um, into Analyst. There will be extensions to the importer in the future. So it'll be more, more flexible. But uh, it's, it's possible to get them in. You just have to do sometimes a little bit of tinkering. So what I have uh, now is my drill hole, uh, my loop and, and drill holes. I'll just uh, import a DEM. So I've just got a Geosoft grid here and I'm just dragging and dropping that into the viewport. And this takes a couple of seconds to appear. Yeah, there it is. And I'll just place it at zero because it's uh, just the grid. Oh, sorry, that's uh, something that occasionally happens. Um, so now you can see my loop and drill holes above the DEM grid. I'm just going to create a surface from that DEM by right-clicking on it in the tree, going to create and surface from data. And I'll call this DEM underscore TS. TS is for triangulated surface. And just OK. And uh, there is my uh, surface with my loop nicely placed on it. If your uh, loops and drill holes aren't draped on the topography, you can also do that in Analyst. I don't have time to demonstrate that today, but I uh, assure you I can, you can do all that uh, in Analyst. I can color that DEM by uh, elevation. So there it is. So um, I'll just turn that off and the next, Thing I will do is just create, uh, turn this, uh, these two files that we've imported here, the loop and the, the data file. So this, this other file here has got all the uh, EM component data in it and depth down hole. Um, I'm just going to uh, turn that into an EM data set, uh, which means we can associate times with the various channels. So if I go to create EM data set, I'll just choose ground TEM here. There's no specific option for downhole EM. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll choose my loop, which is B52, very easy to remember, and the receiver data. And I've got, I can choose different components if I want them. I'm choosing all of them here. Uh, and down here, I can import an Amira um, channel file or uh, .chn file. And you'll see that the, each channel now has an associated time in milliseconds. 
So this first channel is uh, got a negative time because it's in the in the ramp. This is Crohn Pulse EM data. So I'll just confirm and view. And now that we have that uh, data in Analyst, uh, sorry, now that we've created that EM data set, you'll see that uh, two new objects have appeared in the tree, a transmitter and, a, and receivers. I'll expand that. Um, you see these ones here are called Rx on the end for receivers. Uh, so the, this is the EM, uh, EM data set. Um, now that I've done that, I can view decays. So if I go to panels, there's a decay curves option under panels. I've already got it uh, as a tab down here. So if I go to this tab and choose my uh, receiver object, and I can choose all three components and um, I can make the plot logarithmic. And so now we're seeing all three components from a particular station of the data, the, the data set. So that the different components have got different symbols. We can't have them as different colors at the moment, but that's probably coming. Um, I can look at different decays by scrolling through um, with these arrows. Um, this uh, button here will show you the nodes that you, the node that you, or the station that you're currently viewing in the um, in the viewer. So if I go back to the viewer, you can see that that one there, highlighted in blue, is the one we're currently looking at. We'll go back to the decay curves. This button here uh, links the links to the uh, viewer. So if you select a station in the viewer, you can see that decay in the uh, decay curve plot. So we can try that. Um, I'll just go to receivers and choose, choose another one. So I'm highlighting this one on this other drill hole. Go back to the, and, and there we are seeing uh, those different, those decays from that drill hole and that station in the decay plot. So um, the other thing you can do in here is if you decide you've got a bit of noise in your data, things you don't like, you can uh, remove points. So you can turn on this nullify data select a point that you don't want, it's highlighted in red there, and then apply and um, get rid of it. Okay, so you can do a little bit of editing in the, um, in the, of the decays in, in, the, in the decay curve viewer. So I'm gonna just turn off this button here. So I don't see the, just check that those nodes aren't highlighted in here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show is just add some profiles to the uh, to the drill holes. So under I've got the receiver object selected here. Under the visual parameters, I can add profiles. So if I choose all three holes and uh, we'll just use the axial component for now, uh, you can choose which channels to plot. So I'll just unselect all to start with, and then um, I'll just choose maybe channel uh, 23 to 31-ish, 32. And I know from experience, I'm gonna need a scale of about 500 here, and I can make the plot logarithmic using this button here. And then I'll go back to the viewport. Now I've got my uh, EM data profiles displayed on the drill holes. You can see that this is axial component data that we've got an off-hole anomaly at the bottom of this hole, another couple of off-holes in the, well, there's two in that particular hole and another one here. So uh, you can, uh, there's various other options in the visual parameters to change how, how that uh, is, is displayed. So the next thing I'm gonna do is demonstrate the primary field uh, calculation. So if I view this in plan and just move to the center of the window here, um, under geophysics, there's a electromagnetic field modeling uh, option that's primary field calculation. So if I choose that, I can um, choose my transmitter loop, which is B52. Um, and the receivers, you can calculate the primary field on a particular object um, or a curve or something like that, uh, or on a grid. So we're gonna do it on a grid. If I choose, that's uh, 
if I choose click that button, you get this preview of the grid. At the moment, it's horizontal. I'm going to make it vertical. Um, so 90 degree dip, now it's vertical, and the angle here is 39.25 degrees. And that is measured clockwise from the x-axis for some reason, but um, just, just so you know, um, and I'm just going to make the cell size a bit bigger. And if I just rotate the view here, uh, there's the grid that we're going to calculate the primary field on. Um, I can view it back in plan again. If I want to move it actually onto the actual trace, trace of the drill hole, I just use this picker here and click on the drill hole. And now my uh, grid plane is right along the trace of the drill hole. And I'll just rotate it and zoom out a bit so you can see it's quite well, the grid's quite well positioned. So once I'm happy with that, I can create the grid. I'll just call it EM field grid, that's fine. And then we have to uh, calculate the primary field. So I'm just gonna name that primary field. I'll tick this recalculate button on just to show you something later on and press compute. And I've got the primary field vectors on that plane. So you can um, add a number of uh, different planes in, in all kinds of orientations. They can be horizontal, dipping um, uh, from different transmitters, et cetera, and, and they'll all be um, displayed simultaneously. I've only got time to show you one here now. So you can, um, in here, that's created the grid object and the primary field object. If I turn off the grid, I just have the vectors. Uh, if you go to the visual parameters, you've got the ability to uh, resize those, um, those vectors. So using that length button, or I can scale them by amplitude and make it logarithmic if I so cho chose. So um, I won't bother with that today, but you can, you know, you've got some flexibility as to how you display them. Uh, at the moment, they're colored by the total primary field that you can color by various components and even the dip and dip direction of the field. So uh, I can turn that off. They just have um, a, a single color. So that's the um, almost all of the primary field calculation. One thing I do want to show you is if I click the E button, hold down the E button and E key, e key sorry, and click on the loop and highlight it, and then hold down D and drag it, that the primary field recalculates dynamically. So when you're trying to sort out, if you had a target there and you were trying to couple properly to it and work out where your loop needed to go, uh, you can do it like that. And once you've finished editing, you press escape and get out of edit mode. So uh, wherever you move it to, just remember to uh, redrape it on the topography when, you, when you're finished. So that's basically the primary field calculation. The next thing is the Maxwell link. So I'm just gonna fire up a Maxwell project that I have here. So this might take a few seconds or a lot of seconds. And what you see is that the, ooh, that's interesting. Anyway, uh, what you see is that uh, we're viewing the, the geoscience analyst window here and it's automatically just detected that Maxwell has been started and asking me, do I want to connect to that instance of Maxwell? And I can say, yes, um, I can go away. Uh, and then, Here's my Maxwell project. So I've got some profiles on the right-hand side. I've got a plan view of the uh, transmitter loop, which is shown in yellow, the three drill holes and, and some model plates. So I can go um, straight away to the, um, the model window here and just rotate it. So you can see this is the middle of those three drill holes, number 84, and we've got some plates scattered around the uh, drill hole. And I can just right click in the, the model window here and broadcast those plates to partners. And if I go back to analyst, um, those plates have appeared in the, the analyst viewport. So um, there they are. So you can um, uh, 
edit them. If I hold down E, click on the plate, I get all these funny uh, toolbars. If I just zoom in a bit. So the this one here um, changes the uh, dip direction and dip. So it's a bit different to the controls in Maxwell. Uh, the blue ones change the plunge or rotation. Pink one will increase the uh, strike extent and the yellow ones will change the dip extent. So I'm deliberately doing this to, to um, you know, dramatically change this plate so you can see, uh, see the change when we go back to Maxwell. But if I just press escape to get out of edit mode, and then I can right click on the plate in the tree and broadcast to Maxwell. And if I go back to Maxwell now, you can see quite clearly that, that um, those changes have been applied to the Maxwell uh, to the Maxwell project. So there's my new plate that I edited. So that's um, you know sort of uh, it for the Maxwell link. If I just expanded the details of this plate, it's got properties. So it's got the coke hole parameters and the CT is the conductance of the plate. So those are um, transferred across. Um, uh, to and from Maxwell as well. Now I'm just going to turn this one off um, and show you one last thing, which is, is just um, then targeting a drill hole off one of your EM plates. Um, so if I choose this plate here, um, and go to the drill hole panel to the drill hole target option, and then just with this picker, just pick the middle of that plate and make that target a little bit smaller. So it's roughly the same size as the plate. And it's just gonna be called new target. And just say, okay. And you'll see that that, I haven't spent a lot of time on this, but that's roughly in the orientation of the, the plate, but the target is you know, right in the, the center of the plate. I can then go to the drill hole designer and say the target I want to hit is called new target. I'm gonna go from the target to the surface. I'm gonna go 30 meters past, just in case they don't um, intersect it where I think it is. The DEM, I can select here, and then I can generate the drill hole. It's just gonna be called new drill hole. Um, can I get it? Oh, yeah, I did. And um, now we have the drill hole the plan drill hole shown here, and it's um, you know draped on the topography. So if I turn the topographic surface on, there's the collar of that drill hole. Might actually have made two by accident there. Um, I'll turn one off. So there um, is the drill hole we just planned. So that's the sort of uh, complete process of maybe you know looking at downhole EM data in um, Geoscience Analyst. So the next uh, example I have got for you is a, an a Airborne EM survey, which is also from, uh, it's just west of, of this other um, area. Oh, actually I have to show you one more thing before I do that. Um, before I do that, I'll just say, you know, the thing about the, um, the being able the Maxwell link is being able to also you know bring your plates into geoscience analysts but also see them in the context of your geological model so what I've got here is a uh, a geological block model and this is not from um, Queensland this is from um, Manitoba and I've transferred it over to Queensland for the better weather so when I looked yesterday the temperature difference between Flimflon and um, and Balcooma was 55 Celsius so this allows you to see your plates in context of the geological model. So that you can see that they're sitting down here close to this contact between the purple and the brown units. And that may or may not be a, you know, a geologically favorable uh, setting, but that's the other power of the, the Maxwell link is just to be able to see your, um, your plates in their sort of geological context. So now I'll move to that airborne EM example. Um, and I'll just fire that up. So bear with me here. It seems to run a little bit more slowly 
in presentation mode. So again, I've got a, a blank project. And what I'm going to do is just drag in a VP EM1D model. So this is a VP suite model file, this, this .com file. And when I do that and drop it in, um, we get two objects. One is the uh, EM model itself. So if I look here, I've got this, uh, this is a block model. I can turn the conductivity on so we can see, oops, sorry, I'm zooming the right way. We can see the, the conductivity model and the other object is the observed and calculated data. So if you look at what's here, there's um, observed, calculated and residual data for every uh, channel of the, the EM data set. So this is a VTEM data set, I should have pointed out. And what I'll show you next is the 2D model viewer. So again, you go to the panel um, panels option here and go to the 2D profile viewer, which I've got as a tab down here already. And I can choose my observed and calculated data here. I can turn on the section view, choose the model, and we wanna see the conductivity. And I'll just change the depth range here. So uh, we're not plotting anything useful yet. I'm just gonna make this bigger so you can see it. Um, we're not plotting anything useful yet. We're plotting the background response, but if we choose the observed data, um, we can uh, make the scale logarithmic. And this the transition here is where the plot goes to linear. So it's a 10 to the power of whatever's in this box. So if I put minus two in here, uh, click out of it, then I've got a, a more sensible looking plot. I'm just gonna change the colors to something nicer. Um, so the observed data is going to be in black. And I can uh, use these arrows here or this slider at the top of the screen to look at different profiles in the uh, profiles of the data set. This button here with the red and green buttons on it will um, turns on whether or not that profile position is displayed in the in the viewport. So if I just minimize that for a second and go back to the viewport and view in plan, you can see that we're looking at this profile, the red dot is in the northern end and the green dot is at the southern end. So we'll go back to the profile viewer and the, uh, if I just go back and forth a bit here, uh, I can also add the Sorry, it's a bit slow, as I said, in presentation mode. Uh, I can add more data here. Um, sure we just did that. Oh, there it is. Uh, so I can choose the calculated data and I'll show it in red. And so now we're looking at our observed data in black and our calculated data in red. And you can see that we're fitting quite well, um, uh, except maybe at the earliest channel. So either that might be affected by the ramp or we need to do a bit more work on the model to get a, um, a decent fit. So um, you can turn these profiles on and off by clicking the eye. So if I turn that off, then the, uh, I'm not viewing the calculated response anymore. If I just go back to the, uh, the profile here, um, it's going to mind of its own. I'll just click back on this one. So the other button that we have here is the um, uh, create points, which allows you to pick anomalies on the profile. So if I click that and then right click where I want to pick an anomaly. So here's a steeply dipping conductor, dipping towards the uh, left-hand end of the profile, which is south. I just right click on it. I can say, I think the dip of that conductor is something like 85. The dip direction is to the south. I'm gonna give it a high priority. I call number one a good 
anomaly and I'll call it A1 and maybe bedrock. And okay. And then here's another conductor here. You can pick this one. I think this one's stratigraphic. Looks pretty vertical to me. Uh, the dip direction doesn't matter because the dip's vertical. I think this one, I'll just give this one a low ranking because I think it's stratigraphic. I'll call it A2 strat. Uh, and then I'll pick this last one here again at late time. This one looks pretty vertical and stratigraphic. Uh, so that doesn't matter. Uh, leave the ranking at three, we'll call it A3. And then I need to click this uh, create points button again, and it'll create a point set. You can call it whatever you want. You call it anomalies. Okay. And if I now minimize this 2D profile viewer and go back to the viewport, I've got this point set called anomalies. You can see them highlighted there. Um, if you go to the visual parameters and just make them bigger so we can see them. And back to the viewport, now they're, they're much bigger. We can color them by uh, their ranking. So if we go to data colors, I've got a color bar I like. So I'll make a linear color scale from one to three. Uh, I've got a color bar with only three colors in it, which I created outside Analyst and, and uh, you, can, you can bring your own color bars into Analyst as well. And I want the red color to be the highest ranked anomalies. So I'll invert the color bar using that button there. And then back to the viewport and there's my uh, three anomalies uh, ranked, oh, three, three ranked anomalies that I just picked on that, uh, on that profile. So the other thing uh, we can do as with the, um, the downhole EM data was just plot some data on the, on the profiles. So if I select the observed and calculated response curve, and go to visual parameters, I can turn the profiles on. We can choose all the lines, there's only five. Um, and we we'll plot the observed data. We'll plot all the channels this time, make it in log. And I know from experience, the scale is gonna to have to be about a thousand. Um, and if I go back to the viewport, then I've got my EM stacked profiles, anomaly picks and EM model all in the one window. So um, that's basically it. That's the, the end of the presentation today, just showing you the basics of data import and, and manipulation for EM data in um, geoscience analysts. So thanks very much for your attention. Thanks. thanks, James, and thanks to everyone who joined us today. Uh, for those who are in the lecture, we'll give you about 30 seconds uh, to type any questions you might have. And if you do have any questions in the future, don't hesitate to email support at Mirror Geoscience. James, we have one question about the format that you created the time channels in. Oh, I can show you the, show you the file. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'll show you the file. It's just a standard format, uh, MRA format channel file. Uh, sorry, it seems to run very slowly in presentation mode. Um, uh, so if I just, just bear with me. So it's just uh, got a few header lines. It's got the number of channels here the base frequency and off time, and then the center time and the width of the channel in milliseconds. So it, it could be in any units, but you can specify the units in the importer. So it's, uh, um, as, far as, I, as far as I'm aware, that's part of the Amira standard, but this, this file, particular file was exported from Maxwell. Uh, does that answer the question?
I assume it answers the question because there's no extra question popping in. Uh, we have no other questions uh, bouncing in now. Uh, so James will just put up the promo for the next virtual lecture. So please join us next month when Chris Davis will demonstrate how to import DCIP data and how to prepare it for inversion in Geoscience Analyst. And that lecture will take place in Canadian Pacific time. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, and we will see you next month.